Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hamilton? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Revolinsky? Yes. Boyer? Yes. Silvers? Yes. Hamas? Yes. Halley? Yes. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to our consent agenda, I just wanted to mention it was very thrilling for everyone to be out there uh, greeting our Paralympics um, silver medalist. Uh, very extraordinary that we have someone representing both our country and our and uh, our town uh, at this level. So we congratulate Matt Stutzman tonight. And I know we've received a lot of phone calls about um, what is going to be done. I believe this was organized fairly spontaneously. But I will say that um, hy V, who is one of uh, Matt's corporate sponsors, is planning a um, corporate, a, a community-wide celebration that will include uh, many fun things. I'm not going to steal their thunder, but there should be more information available on that next week. Uh, so we look forward to celebrating uh, more properly with Matt in uh, the very near future. We'll move on to our consent agenda. We just have uh, four items. Approval of minutes from the August 27th meeting, approval of a liquor license, I'm sorry, there are two there for both the uh, uh, Eagles and also the Arts and Convention Center. We have a resolution for the hiring of three uh, part-time positions for the Park and Rec Department and approval of claims in the amount of $474,431.76. Are there any questions regarding those consent agenda items? Not entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Move by Silvers. Second. Second by Hamilton. Uh, please call the roll. Silvers. Yes. Hamilton. Yes. Revolinsky. Yes. Howley. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Hamas. Yes. Boyer. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we'll move on to our resolutions and action items. Uh, we have a resolution determining the necessity of fixing a date for a public hearing on the matter of the adoption of the proposed commercial, industrial, residential, urban revitalization plan. Uh, and John, that uh, date would be our next uh, council meeting? No, it would be October 22nd. Um, okay. We have to do a 30-day notice of the publication, okay. so the date you have set would be October 22nd to come. Okay. Council, I'd entertain a motion then to approve the public hearing for October 22nd. So moved. Second. Move. Okay. <laughs> Moved by Hamilton, second by Boyer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Uh, as council, I just wanted to thank the council members who were able to attend uh, last Thursday's uh, workshop with our Blue Zone team for a site visit. I thought the meeting went extremely well. Uh, I know that Michael and uh, Martha and Connie were the three that were able to attend. Uh, we, we were the third city of 10 that are going to be visited during this period of time where they're evaluating the small <coughs> cities. They plan to make uh, an announcement sometime in mid-October. Um, we, I think, really got a good representative group from the community there. Uh, I think we have made a very good impression. And um, I anticipate that uh, things will go well for us, but we just never know what kind of competition we're up against. But I think it also helped us enliven the commitment that our community showed last fall and over the winter to participating in this, so that was uh, encouraging as well. The, some of the areas that uh, we discussed as far as uh, government's involvement in either creating policy, uh, uh, adopting codes, uh, or just to give you a, a sense, um, there's, again, these are community <coughs> pledge actions that, uh, that would be taken on behalf of the whole community. And um, one area was in the area of pedestrian friendliness. So there's a program, a national program called Complete Streets. It's a policy-based program where Different things are done to uh, plan the either the construction of new streets or the um, repositioning of streets to be more customer friendly, uh, pedestrian friendly. And a lot of that we have uh, done in a sense with our sidewalk program and with our bikeway walkway master plan. But I think we made the commitment to review that and see that we've accomplished everything that we had set out to do within that plan and to potentially expand that. 
to some degree. Uh, there was an area of tobacco policy, which I know is uh, something that's very dear to Councilman Revolinsky, and uh, there are more things that we can do uh, in that field as well. Um, I will probably keep, give, get everyone a copy of some of the recommendations or some of the uh, some of the areas that they would recommend as uh, pledge actions to kind of give you a sense. Because what will happen in October if we are chosen is that the first thing we will do is to reorganize our community through these different leadership groups. And they would come in and assist us in writing what they call a blueprint. And this blueprint is, is essentially a, an amalgamation of the different pledge activities that each area of the community are going to take on. Uh, so we'll maybe get a, a little bit of a review before that uh, point in time so that we can be better prepared if that does happen for us. But it was a very good visit, um, and we look forward to hearing from them in mid-October. Uh, so next we will move to our committee and board reports uh, personnel is, uh, first. Uh, <coughs> thanks to uh, Darren's preparation of our minutes, we did have a personnel meeting. <laughs> John and Darren and I met, and um, I guess at this point we sort of tabled the discussion because we've asked Kevin to sort of give us some feedback in terms of what the savings would actually be. Uh, in terms of if we were to hire a tech person, whether it would be beneficial as far as, you know, we definitely have the need, the library has the need, Rebecca was there and indicated to us the number of, you know, the foundation is very willing to, you know, help in purchasing new computers for them, but in the same token, she does need a tech person to do this installation and to be there to work with them. and. Hopefully it might be kind of a job share type thing, but we need to know what basically other departments, if they could utilize this person, if it would be a savings in terms of if there is a problem within a department, they wouldn't have to actually go out of the department to find someone to come and come to their rescue as far as a tech program or a tech problem is. So at this point, I guess we're kind of waiting for Kevin to kind of come up with some dollars and cents figures for us in terms of, you know, whether it would be beneficial. And then, as John pointed out, we also need to sort of get back to ways and means because, in a way, it has to basically come from ways and means in terms of, you know, dollars that we would be spending. So, at the moment, personnel is kind of just, you know, tabling our meeting until we find some additional information. Okay. Thank you, Martha. Kevin, anything to add to that? Uh, just that we uh, we basically we know we are spending about forty one thousand a year, but we want to break that down now into departments and kind of look at the dynamics of what that forty one thousand means. And also, Julie and I today had a, a pretty good discussion about uh, her department in particular and the needs that are in that department for the programming that they have. And kind of going to look at that a little more tightly as well, and maybe have a couple of meetings outside of uh, that consideration to make sure that when we do this, you know. We are being able to in-house, or, or are there dynamics that we'll have to be spending outside of that? So uh, we're just going to get a little bit more down to the point with it, and hopefully we'll come around to that in uh, about a month or so. Great, thank you. Okay, next we'll move on to a report from our Water and Sewer Utilities Committee. Um, yeah, we met directly after the meeting we had with personnel, so I got the pleasure of staying for about <laughs> two and a half hours that evening, but uh, that's beside the point. We had four agenda items, um, one of which we didn't uh, address at all because the person that brought it forward didn't show up to the meeting. Um, another agenda item we had concerned uh, Mr. Jesse Pilcher and a uh, why connection, an illegal connection for sewer that was discovered during the Second Street construction. Uh, the committee moved to uh, table that issue for a little while until uh, Mr. Pilcher and our administrator could get together on what costs were incurred per lineal foot for his new sewer line and what it cost us per lineal foot for supplying laterals with the new sewer main. Uh, the tapping fee was waived 
for Mr. Pilcher already on his property. So we'll we'll take that up at a future date after Kevin and he have had a chance to go through it. Um, we also had a resident from 1606 Indian Creek Drive who came. Uh, he had several concerns. Um, this is a property he had purchased for his own leisure. Um, he he was looking to put up a, a small building on it and came to ask for permits and uh, what was required from the city and then ran up against all of these different regulations. Um, we moved to table this issue as well because there are uh, other committees that need to be involved with uh, what his requests are for that piece of property. Um, <clears throat> and then the uh, Bulk, bulk of the remainder of our time was spent uh, talking to uh, Mr. Terry Lavery of uh, Amherst about the Amherst subdivision. It's a subdivision that we had approved as a council uh, prior to this particular group being on the council. Uh, it's located along Walton Lake Road on the north side of the roadway there. Uh, when it initially came to us, it was about a 36 or a 38 unit housing development. Um, he has increased that to approximately 56 units now, 58 units out there. Um, at the time that he initially came to us, he had asked the city for uh, assistance in, in installing a new sewer line, sewer main connection. Uh, to come over to a man, an existing manhole over along Pleasant Plain Road. Um, the, uh, at that time, the council had approved uh, allowing Mr. Lavery to do that, and we were going to determine an amount to either reimburse him or to supply the engineering work for him. Um, I wasn't clear on which that particularly was, but um, this project has has been um, given a general green light by the council, and this is the type of development that we really need to have going on in our city, since we are in a TIF moratorium right now, and tax increment financing really wouldn't be the best to move forward with a project like this. I think this in-kind donation back to Mr. Lavery for the work that is ultimately going to become the property of the city is the direction that we want to move. I think that uh, with this assistance to him of a, a total of up to $60,000 for this project, it will, um, it will in turn get us a brand new sewer line with manholes. It will in turn get us an easement that he has already procured for uh, running this line out there for that property. It will also give new taps for residences that currently aren't within the city of Fairfield but could tap into our sewer line if they desired. And uh, I think that uh, we need to move ahead and approve this again as a council so that we can we can make this official. I believe Kevin was going to draw up or go through contracts with Mr. Lavery on this, and I don't know whether you have done that yet or you will supply that to us at a later date, but I would like to see the council give us a, uh, a general approval of this at this time. Um, yes, Your Honor, a couple of things. Um, I, John and I talked about today getting together uh, over the next week and, and drafting a contract that could be approved by council that would meet our needs. Um, one thing I would want to point out on this property too, and I'm sure the subcommittee members uh, saw this the other night, is that it has gone from uh, 38 to 56 units, so there's a, a definite unit increase. But on the plans, I know that you, uh, you subcommittee members noticed that those setbacks were somewhat smaller than what would normally be on a, on a R1 subdivision type setback situation. Well, uh, Terry had come uh, fourth at first, and we were looking at, um, uh, Tracy and I were with him, looking at the possibilities of, you know, going in for adjustments and instead decided mm -hmm. to switch gears and to look at uh, the possibility of use, using our city's planned unit uh, development district distinction. 
uh, in our planning code. One problem with that, and typically, I, w I guess I should say first, is typically that we'll just call it, we call them PUDs. Of course, it's a funny name, but that's what we call them for short. But um, PUDs are typically quite open. In, their, uh, in the way that you look at setbacks and other, what they're designed for is a developer to be able to come to either a planning commission, or in our case, our uh, board of adjustments, the BOA clears them. But you come in with that and you work with that board to basically design uh, a subdivision that fits on the piece of property you're trying to use. And by doing that, you can gain uh, greater densities of development. In other words, save more green space perhaps in the development. This development in particular, just to be five acres, does have an appreciable amount of green space because of those suggested um, setbacks, somewhat smaller than normal. <clears throat> the problem with that is, in examining our, our PUD district design, there's a, there's a pretty considerable amount of rules in it that make it somewhat more restrictive than you would imagine seeing one being. Uh, very restrictive, as a matter of fact, the restrictions match or are greater than, in some cases, our actual R1s and R2 distinctions in those parts of the code. So it's, it's kind of a mystery, but in short, um, we're going to be approaching the Planning Commission to look at uh, seeing if they are willing to support eliminating certain parts of that code that would make the uh, PUD more open to what it is designed to do in the planning world, and that is to allow for more innovation and, and um, you know, particular and, and specific setback requirements or other requirements in developments in the future going forward. And that's a business friendly, it's a, in many times environmentally friendly a way to do development. Uh, if they're not willing to do that, we would be um, approaching the Board of Adjustments in a simple uh, setback adjustment type manner. Hopefully the Planning Commission can see the, the faults in that code. Of course, we'll probably provide examples to them of other planned unit development codes that are out there. Um, so going forward, there is that consideration. I would ask that Council approve this uh, measure as requested but uh, contingent upon us, uh, you know, figuring that out in some manner, making those changes that are necessary, and that being a part of uh, what our contract stipulates. So we're not looking at an agreement at this point in time. Are we reaffirming a prior agreement that we had? What we're doing for the, is um, uh, approving moving ahead with this agreement, not approving the agreement for our partnership. Per se, uh, for our partnership, just our partnership. Sewer. Right. with the sewer end of it. The, right. uh, the money for this will come from uh, a reserve that we currently use for mm -hmm. new construction and maintenance of sewer lines and we have at least the $60,000 in that fund at this point in time um, and again this would be new sewer that would be put in and sized appropriately for right. uh, the development that's going to go in out there. And we were happy about that initially, I know, because it does, it did upgrade the sewer in that area as well, which yes. really needed it. Yes. Initially, Your Honor, the council approved $30,000 in aid uh, for the library project uh, for 38 units. Now it has become 56 units, and the request is for 60000 Tonight's approval would lead to it's basically an approval for John and I to craft a contract for your later approval. You just answered my question. Sorry. No. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a chance again. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, this is not a final so approval. So I'd, I'd entertain a motion <laughs> no. then. We'll just have this as a motion then to um, approve the, in principle, uh, the use of $60,000 towards the Amherst uh, subdivision for, uh, for future development. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion Second. by Hamas. Second by Revolinsky. Any other discussion? Now please call the roll. Hamas? Yes. Revolinsky? Yes. Boyer? Yes. Halley? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Ham or Silvers? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have administrator and department reports. Uh, Chief, do you have a police report? And I wanted to thank you also for being there last week with our Blue Zone group. And John. What's that? I, did I mention John? I I'm sorry. I did show up for 10 minutes. <laughs> I didn't see John. He didn't sign in. I did what? sign in. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't get your attention. <laughs> We're in different groups. <laughs> um, at this time, I'd like to invite the council to the mass casualty exercise that we have on October 6th um, at the Fairfield High School. It will be in the morning. Um, it's going to be as a real world event as what we can make it with some little plane here and there. Um, it will meet our federal funding requirements for a mass casualty drill that we're required to have every five years. And that 
allows us to have state and federal funding. It's going to be a multidiscipline drill with all the Jefferson County partners. We've been planning this drill since July of 2011, so Tony was there on the initial part of it. Um, we're going to incorporate students, faculty, and staff from the high school. Um, it has target capabilities meeting the federal requirements for every discipline that is going to be participating in the exercise. Um, one of the things that we are going to do is if we have a real emergency, we'll um, stop the exercise and then go handle that. The week of the exercise, we'll be going out to the neighborhood telling them how it's going to affect them coming and going from their house so they'll know what uh, requirements. And basically, we've got 10 entities playing in this, so it's going to be a huge, huge drill. Um, the second thing that we have is, thanks to Kevin's rollover thing, we are getting car, com or car computers. It was an unfunded state mandate to go paperless. Um, we have to be certified. Every officer will be certified on how to run license plates and driver's license. Um, it won't preclude certain things that the dispatchers do. But they'll be able to run it from the car. We, um, the officers are getting tested on October 4th, right before the drill. And then the in installation for those will be in the middle part of October. And then the training will be rolled out. So hopefully by the 1st of November, we will have car computers. And then the other thing is trick-or-treat is October 30th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Again, it's on a Wednesday, which conflicts with church and other things. So it's moved back to Tuesday. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Well, we have a light agenda tonight, so if there's any other I have business. one other thing I would like to say. I have say. one other thing. Okay. <laughs> possible. Oh, but it's right. short. It's very short. Come it on. is. We, we, sorry, we weren't going for any records. It's okay. Right. I just want to give a quick uh, quiet right. zone project update. Um, we've been around D Street. The medians are poured, and that street will be re reopening this week. Uh, crews will then go to B Street, finish that one. That'll reopen, then they'll move over most likely to court and Maine. And um, aiming for end of the month completion, then I have to call in the FRA rep to uh, review the project. And then there's a 21 day period after he's reviewed it for some paperwork. So I'm not even going to say a date when it's going to be done because I don't <laughs> want people coming to me and saying, you said, I've already got enough of that. It'll be done this fall. It'll be done when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which is <laughs> this year. I think we want to stick. We'll we at least that. want to start at over under pool something. You know, <laughs> go Halloween over under. <laughs> see what we do. And I would, just, I would just like to remind everybody that uh, this weekend is Kids Day, and I would like to thank everybody that uh, works for the city that's involved with this for all the help that they've given so far and all the help that they will be giving. And we deeply appreciate it as a Kiwanis Club, and, and we feel it's our pleasure to do this for the city. Great. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Okay. Moved by okay. Hamilton. Second. Second by Silvers. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign.